We are now leaving Kiambu police station after a day full of drama. I want to call it drama because it was totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. Trying to use the police and the judicial system to settle what are purely political scores. We are seeing the country regressing to the dark old days. The dark old days of dictatorship, of, uh, of uh, suppression of free will, suppression of free thought, and everything that you can talk of, which is negative. And we want to assure Kenyans that these are things we are used to. And therefore, we are going to deal with them in the usual manner. Yes, we shall deal with them in the usual manner. Uh, the issues that Kenyans are raising out there can never be swept under the carpet, regardless of how many times you arrest people or leaders. The issues being raised out there will continue to be raised. And it doesn't matter what kind of force, what kind of, of intimidation you, um, you employ. Okay? Uh, whoever is uh, misadvising those who are currently in power should think twice that this route, we have seen it in the past, it has never led anywhere. And we are more than determined to continue with the reform agenda under the auspices of the movement for the defense of democracy. That movement is a movement that is going to sweep anything and anybody who stands in its way. Okay? We have seen the drama in Nairobi today. And that is just but the beginning. This country is going to be liberated totally. Totally. And I want to thank the police, even though they are under immense pressure. They are under immense pressure, I can tell you. They have given us some cash bill. The, the, oh, 50,000 shillings each. They want us to go to court in Kahawa. That court which was built for hardcore, for terrorists, you know. The court, the Kahawa court was built for terrorists, because it's in the committee. That's where they're taking us on Thursday to go and uh, take pleas. I won't talk much about the court issue, for good reasons. Yeah, but uh, this is just but uh, a continuation. It was in the most disgraceful manner <laughs> I've ever seen a Kenyan being handled like that. I've been in this country for some time and I know how decent police officers are. But the ones I've seen today, it was shocking. It was seriously shocking. It was in complete violation of the human rights. Father, I want to state it very clearly. It is wrong to arrest a member of parliament or a senator who is entering the house within the precincts, yeah, within the precincts of parliament. It is wrong because where our offices are, that is where parliament is. And it is wrong for what they have done. Whoever gave them instructions to come and arrest members of parliament, it's a shame. I want to say shame on him. All I can say is that whoever has mistreated us, we forgive him. We forgive those police officers who arrested us. But we would like to commend these officers here in Kiambu Police Station. So we are happy. But what I want to inform the Kenyans, that what we are fighting for that one we are not going to relent. We are not going to compromise. Chakula, lazima, beyake iende chini. Hiyo ikienda chini, at least wa Kenya wanaweza kuishi katika inchi. Kwa sababu saa hizi, wa Kenya hawaezi kuishi kwa inchi yao. Mi nataka niseme hivi ya kwamba serekali haijalishi nitia gasngapi ze nyambazo mumeweza kuzilipu wa leo. The ugonjwa tulionao leo hii ni kwamba bei ya maisha imepanda juu. So, 
na iomba serikali na nawaambia kila siku nyinyi mtauza mtarusha tear gas na wananchi hawatachoka kwa sababu at the end of the day mwananchi nyumbani ndo ananunua mfuko wa unga sima na mfuko wa sima bei iko juu ukienda nyumbani stima iko juu bei ya maji iko juu watoto wetu shule wazazi CBC kila kitu kimepanda juu so lazima tufate kile kidonda na kidonda siku turushia sisi tear gas kidonda raisi shika usukani katika nchi hii na urudishe bei ya maisha chini kwa wananchi wako Hivyo peke yake ndivyo ambavyo vitawezekana. Bila hivyo leo ni sisi ndio umetushika. Lakini nataka niwaambie serikali ya Kenya kwanza, kila tunapolala na tunapoamka, popularity yenu inazidi kushuka na wananchi wanazidi kukasirika. Hilo namba mulitilie manani. Maandamano yako katika katiba. Sisi tulichaguliwa na wananchi tukachaguliwa mrengo wa upinzani. Ili tuangalie na kucheck balances ambazo serikali inatakana kufuatiliza kulingana na miundo msingi. Sisi hatukuwa tunapiga kelele wala sisi si wenda wazimu. Tulikuwa tunapeleka vilio vya wananchi kama wenzangu vile ambavyo wamesema. Na matatizo ambayo yamezungumzwa na mheshimiwa Amina hapa hayamkuti mtu wa opposition peke yake. Matatizo haya hata wale ambao walikuwa wanatumika kuitwa mahaslas pia hao wanateseka. Makosa ambayo kwamba yanaendelezwa na serikali hii hatutanyamaza. Ile haki hatuioni. Leo ma CS 50 wamewekwa CS 50 wamewekwa wakati mama mboga yule mambo wewe ndio utakuwa kwenye serikali hakuangaliwa. Ni wangapi kati ya wale ma CS ambao walitoka kwa mama mboga? Ile pesa ambayo budget ambayo imewekwa kwa hawa assistant ministers hii pesa hii yote ingefanya mangapi kwa yule mtu wa chini ambaye kwamba hajiwezi katika sahihi tuko na jukumu tulichaguliwa kutetea watu na tuko na jukumu kusimama kuongea ule uwasi watatuweka jela watatupigia tear gas hatutasimama hii haitaturudisha nyuma mpaka haki itendeke kwa mwananchi ambaye kwamba ni minyonge hilo lazima lieleweke huyu mama mheshimiwa ale madharao aliyofanyiwa ameshikwa matiti na mwanamke mwenzake askari amemweka makucha huku nikaka nikashindwa huyu ni lesbian au ni kitu gani huyu mama <laughs> na nilipomuuliza kwa nini unafanya mwanamke mwenzako kama hivyo huyo mama anaambia haijatosha utapata zaidi ni serikali gani kutoka nayo to the young people we are the largest population but i want us to understand that places don't make people it is people that make places Kenya will never make us. It is up to us to make Kenya. It is the Americans that made America. It is the Japanese that made Japan. It is up to you and me, the young people, to join hands with our leaders and make sure we bring the change that we need in this country. It is up to us to make this country. So let's come out. From the topmost commander to the lowest officer because they have understood the law. The third issue of substance is that my clients are going to be charged with an offence called attending unlawful assembly. That is a 1965 act, the Public Order Act. Still the state is not aware that in 27th of August 2010, Kenya promulgated a new constitution. And in that constitution, we, all of us, including the police and the head of state and everybody, enacted Article 37, which says everybody has a right to demonstrate, to picket, on condition that they are not harmed. Look at all these members of parliament. None is carrying a sword. None is carrying a gun. None is carrying a stone. It does not require anybody's consent to exercise Article 37 of the Constitution. Going forward, tomorrow I'll be moving to the Constitutional Court. One, to challenge the provision of declaring a meeting an illegal assembly. This country it is only the constitutional organ called the court that can declare a position illegal.
The police don't have that power. The police don't have that power. The police will enforce law and order. So we shall be moving tomorrow to the constitutional court to challenge the provision under which the members of parliament are being taken to Kahawa. Number two, we shall also be challenging seriously the question of arresting members of parliament from a privileged position to Kahawa court because Kahawa court is by law a court for terrorism. So these members of parliament are now being taken to be terrorists. What image are we putting to the whole world when you have four members of parliament being taken to a terrorist court? How will foreigners take us? That parliament is infiltrated by terrorists? Let some decisions be taken with caution because the consequences on this country is grave.